These are fireweed shoots. I absolutely love this time of year when these start popping up. You've only got quite a short window of time to collect these when they're at their best. And that is, for me, around early to mid-April. And quite a lot of plants get compared to asparagus, but these are about the closest you can get without actually finding asparagus. They've got a very similar taste and texture. The best flavour of this is actually at the base of the plant where it's been blanched or the, the stem's still white because it's had less contact with the sunlight. So when you're harvesting them, if you get your knife and just cut about an inch below the ground, then you can collect more of the underground stem. And this is the best bit here. You can eat them at any stage, but they are best at about this size. This one here is about perfect. You see when the foliage on top is still red. As they mature, the foliage on top will go green. It is all still fine to eat at this stage, but they do go slightly bitter as they mature. You can eat them raw as well, especially the younger ones like this are nice and sweet. More mature ones are better steamed. The whole of this fireweed or rose bay willow herb plant is edible and I will include some more uses of this plant in the series later in the year. It's a much easier plant to ID when it's fully grown and in flower so if you're not sure you have the right plant maybe wait until summer so you can ID it then take a note of where it's growing so you can come back and harvest the shoots next spring. These are the dead stems from last season's growth so this is a good way to find fireweed shoots because they'll be growing in amongst all of this dead growth. These are the fluffy seeds that are left from last year. So as you can see they form really big patches. I'm pretty much surrounded by it here. They get the name fireweed because they're one of the first plants to establish themselves after a fire. They're really quick at colonizing bare soil. This plant spreads from underground rhizomes, which are edible too, but you do need the landowner's permission to dig them up. So this ground under here would just be a mass of tangled rhizomes. And then this spring growth grows up from those rhizomes. So there'll literally be thousands of these shoots all in amongst last year's growth. And the good thing is that if you harvest these, they'll just keep sending up new, new shoots so you can collect quite a few good mills from this. This is a European larch, Larix decidua. This time of year, there are two parts of the tree that we can harvest. First of all, we've got the young leaves or needles, which are really soft and can be eaten raw. And they've got a really lovely citrus flavor. So you can tell it's European larch by the fact it's got masses of needles all coming from one point which is like a, a wooden protrusion. 
and the needles are really soft. They can be eaten raw in salads, they're also good infused into alcohols or into vinegar and they're also good infused into sugar. Whenever you're harvesting edible conifer needles it's good to be aware of yew needles. These don't look anything like yew tree needles but it's a, it's a good plant to be able to identify because yew is deadly poisonous. The other thing that we can forage from larch in April are these the female flowers or larch roses. They look like some sort of tropical fruit and they have a nice citrus flavour similar to the needles and also if you pick one and smell it you'll get that nice strong citrusy smell. So these are also good for infusing you can infuse alcohol with these like gin and get that nice citrusy flavour from it. And apparently they're really good fermented, though I've not tried that yet. This is free cornered leek, Allium triquetrum a nice tasty member of the onion family. So all alliums are edible. So it's a nice safe family for beginner foragers, as long as the leaves have got that distinctive onion smell, then it is safe to eat. Free cornered leek is a highly invasive plant in the UK and it forms really dense large patches so just be careful you don't help it to spread on the plus side you can eat as much of this as you want and not feel guilty because it does take over areas and you'll be doing the native plants a favor by picking this because once it does take hold it kind of drowns out any native plants that are trying to grow here The whole plant is edible, the leaves are like a moulder, sweeter type of wild garlic. My favourite part are the flower stems, they're nice and succulent and they taste just like leek. I prefer to eat these raw than cooked, they're just nice snipped onto salads or stirred into melting cheese and put on a jacket potato and the flowers make a nice edible garnish. The bulbs are edible too. Normally you'd need permission to dig up any wild plant, but as these are highly invasive, you can feel free to dig them up. So yeah, just like a small onion or garlic bulb. So when I say they're invasive and it's fine to dig them up, I'm just talking about the UK there. If you're watching this in a different country, then you should check up on its status. I think they're native to the Mediterranean, this plant. If you're foraging this plant before it's in flower, just be very careful of bluebells, which are toxic. The leaves are very similar, but you just need to check for the onion smell. The bluebells won't have a scent. As you see here, it's a nice big patch of free cornered leek. Just next to it there are bluebells. very similar leaves. Three-cornered leek leaves are long and thin, just like bluebell leaves. But unlike bluebell leaves, three-cornered leek, if you look at the underside of the leaf, they have a really pronounced ridge.
So bluebells have a slight ridge, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as that. The flower stems are triangular. That's where they get their name from, free cornered leek. The flowers hang in drooping clusters of usually about six to ten flowers per stem. Each flower has six white petals, each with a distinctive green stripe. So in my area, they flower throughout April. Another thing to be careful of is these flowers can be mistaken for the white variety of bluebells. They have a similar growing pattern, like the flowers hang down. The main difference is, apart from the onion smell, is that the white bluebells don't have the green stripes on the petals. This is the plant I highly recommend learning to forage. It's quite nice and easy to ID really, as long as you're checking the onion smell and the flowers have got the green stripe. There's not much you can confuse them for, apart from maybe a few flowered leek, which is very closely related and also edible. The main difference being it only has a couple of flowers per stem and the flowers don't have that green stripe on. But these grow in really large patches so you can collect quite a lot of it. There we go, quite a nice amount there. Collected that in less than a minute probably. How much would you be paying for that in a shop if you were getting spring onions or garlic? Probably quite a lot. So you're getting free food there and helping the environment. This is borage, Borago officinalis, also known as star flower, an edible spring and summer herb. Its leaves are really hairy, especially the more mature ones. And the leaves taste like cucumber, especially the, the younger leaves. The flowers are blue and have five pointed petals. And you can see why they're called star flower. And they have a long flowering period from April all the way through summer. The stems and the flower buds are also very hairy. There are a few potential confusions with this plant. There's the much more common green alkanet, which has quite similar looking flowers. They're just a bit smaller, but the green alkanet flowers are also edible, but I just don't really rate them very highly. Not a very nice flavor. The one you do have to be really careful of though is foxglove, which is very poisonous. There's a young foxglove there. So if you're not sure on how to identify foxglove, then it's best not to pick borage until it's in flower. There's no mistake in them then because foxglove will have tall spikes of pink flowers and borage has these smaller five petaled blue flowers. The young leaves of borage I'll eat raw and the same with the flowers. The larger leaves are better cooked or used for making tea. This 
This is a lovely patch of garlic mustard, Aliaria petiolata, also known as hedge garlic or jack by the hedge. This is a member of the brassica or cabbage family with a lovely mustard flavour. It's really good eaten raw or cooked like cabbage and it makes a really tasty pesto. Its flavour really divides opinion. Some people really hate it, other people like me really like it. It can go slightly bitter after the plant is in flower like this, but I don't really mind bitter flavours. The key is to find it at its best stage, like this here. So around April time, when you're getting these vertical flower stems, but before they flower like this. These are really tasty. Garlic mustard is a biennial plant where it has a two year life cycle. In its first year, it will grow these basil leaves in a rosette. And these are more rounded or kidney shaped with rounded teeth. And its second year, it will send up these vertical flower stems and the leaves that grow on these stems, especially near the top, are lighter green and they're pointed and have sharper teeth so they look a bit more like nettles. And these leaves have a mild mustard smell when you crush them. Garlic mustard has clusters of small white flowers and like all of the mustard family, the flowers are cruciform. So that's four petals in a cross. You'll find this growing in quite large patches all along country roads, field edges, open bits of waste ground like this, and in meadows, woodland clearings, all sorts of places that are getting a lot of sunlight. To be honest, I'm not sure why in the UK we buy cabbage and other greens like that from the shops when we've got so many different available greens growing all around us. Not only are these much tastier than the cabbages you can buy in the shop, but they're also free and they're also much more nutritious than farm grown veg. So that's about it at the perfect stage there. But I will also pick the ones with flowers that are open. The flower buds of the rowan tree can be picked in April. They have a delicious almond or marzipan flavour. I'll show you how to ID the rowan tree later in the year in this series. It's much easier to ID it when the leaves are open fully and the berries are growing. The flower buds can be eaten raw in small amounts. They're also good for making syrup, but the best use for them is if you infuse them in milk, then you can use the milk to make a delicious almond flavored custard or creme anglaise. Dandelions have a long season, but around April, May is the best for collecting the flowers. You'll see these just about everywhere this time of year. So the flowers are good for making vegan honey, which I will do a video at some point on how to make that. They're also good for making cordials, tea and infusing oil. The leaves can be collected pretty much all year round. And this is a, a green that I have most days. I'll put it in like a mixed green smoothie. It's a good idea to mix these with other sweeter greens because they are very bitter, but they are very nutritious, very high in vitamins A, C and K. The root is edible too. It's not one of the best roots in my opinion, but if you have them grown in your garden, it's worth giving them a try. They're 
quite good roasted. This is common hogweed and the young shoots are a really good edible this time of year. I'll probably say this a few times in this series but this is a member of the Apiaceae or carrot family so it's probably not one for beginners. It's got some really good edibles in this family but it's also got some deadly members like hemlock so extra care needs to be taken when foraging from this family. So it's a really common plant this can be found all along roadsides and edges of fields. You want to harvest these shoots before the leaves have opened. Once the leaves have opened like this they're still edible but the texture isn't very nice. That's probably about the limit there to what I'd go to. Even with the mature ones like this you can still eat the stems. See these ones down here are about perfect. So with common hogweed you want to make sure that the leaves and the stem are covered in a downy white fur. The main plant you'll mistake this for is possibly giant hogweed which is one that you don't even want to touch because the sap can cause really bad skin blistering. I've done a video going a lot more in detail on common hogweed so I'll post a link to that video in the description. April is the best time for these young shoots. You can find them earlier, but they're not usually as good as this. But in April you'll be finding these everywhere. They've got a nice flavour, quite like um, cardamom, but a bit sweeter. I'll usually steam these and then pan fry in butter. In last month's videos I was talking about wild garlic and how the leaves are at their best in March. Uh, the leaves are still edible in April and they're still fine. They're a little bit past their best but for me April is all about the unopened flower buds like this. These are amazing. They've got a real strong garlic kick to them. So if you just brush back the leaves you can see loads of these popping up. So these are good eaten raw but I really like to pickle them or ferment them and that just adds a whole new flavour to them. You'll find absolute masses of these in April. Just so you can see what I mean when I say it's really abundant for wild foods at this time of year. Just in this one little spot, I've got loads of cleavers, I've got hogweed there, loads of dandelions, loads of nettles here. Clover. More nettles, loads of cleavers or goosegrass. Got garlic mustard. More hogweed. Loads of free cornered leek. More nettles, goosegrass, just all the way up here, it's just loads of wild foods. Obviously they're not all edible, We've got some poisonous ones here, like arum lily. There's a good example there of the arum lily flower. Mm -hmm.